Nestle is one of the most hated companies in the world. The list of terrible actions they've taken just to make more money is enough to write a streaming platform docuseries. They're known for using child labor as part of one of their plantations and not caring about their working conditions or fair pay. That's just the tip of the iceberg. And while many people still purchase their products, it's usually because they haven't been filled in on the news. Here's the dark truth behind Nestle. Nestle is one of the leading producers of packaged water bottles. See those fancy images of springs, lakes, and glaciers in Nestle packaged water bottles? All of them are fake. In fact, they're probably damaging those very same springs, lakes, and glaciers by producing the water, as almost all of them are from the ground. That on its own is a big red flag. Packaged bottles are almost always made with single-use plastic, which contributes to the deaths of millions of sea creatures worldwide due to plastic production. Almost all plastic bottles you'll find during a beach cleaning will be related to a Nestle brand, meaning Nestle is one of the biggest polluters in the world. So they they hurt the environment by sourcing the water and also by selling it in plastic bottles. But here's where it gets darker than that. Many companies are at a water crisis in some countries. Qatar, Israel, Libya, Jordan, and a couple other countries are currently suffering from water scarcity. Water scarcity spreads waterborne diseases like cholera and has a great economical impact in countries relying on agriculture. But most importantly, it affects the general population's nutritional intake, especially children. If they grow without access to clean water, they'll suffer stunted growth and weakened immune systems. So what does Nestle have to do with this? Well, another country suffering from water scarcity is Pakistan, and they have a small community known as Bati Dewan. Here, a village counselor claims that children were being sickened by filthy water. That's because Nestle, as a bottled water maker for their Pure Life brand, dug a deep well to deprive locals of clean water. It was so terrible that it made the village's water incredibly dirty and sank the water level from 100 to 300 to 400 feet. The people of this village got sick because Nestle took their fresh water for their own resources. They've also done the same with the city of Flint, Michigan. Flint was undergoing a massive water crisis, which to this day still affects them. But that's because Nestle was using nearby water reserves of the city for their own bottled water products. And that's not the first time they use water shadily for their own means. A Chicago-based business once sued Nestle because, apparently, five-gallon jugs of ice mountain water they bought from them were nothing else than tap water. Of course, if you were to listen to the marketing tactics and the glamorous advertising, you'd think that most bottled water is from the Himalayas or Antarctica. Not Nestle, though. It's mostly all tap water. This is not the first time this has happened. And in fact, 12 years ago, Nestle's waters was sued over allegations of false labeling, settling for $10 million in charitable discounts to those affected. Nestle's dark history starts with its very beginnings back in 1867 Switzerland and founder Henry Nestle. Henry wanted to create a line of milk-based baby formula for babies unable to receive breast milk. He designed a formula using dried milk, vegetable oils, and sugars. So far so good, right? Well, the company's misleading advertising led mothers to think that their formula was essential for their baby's growth and that breast milk wasn't enough. Except that most nutritional experts know that breast milk is the single greatest nourishment for infants. Fast forward to a century later, and now Nestle controls around 2,000 brands worldwide, with the baby formula being the most famous. These controversies came to light in the 1970s, centered around the aggressive marketing practices by Nestle in developing countries. Sometimes they distribute free samples and promotional materials to healthcare workers. The worst of all was Nestle hiring saleswomen in developing regions of Asia and Africa, already vulnerable places precisely due to resources, to give medical advice to mothers and hand them free samples of the baby formula. These saleswomen would dress up as nurses, and undereducated mothers in some of the underdeveloped countries would obviously believe them. Not only that, but Nestle's team also weighed and packaged the samples strategically so that they'd last up to the day when the deceived mothers would be fully dependent on the formula and would also stop lactating, forcing them to buy more formula. They even went as far as to bribe nutritionists that could testify that their product was superior when it wasn't. Suddenly, mothers breastfed their babies less and relied more on Nestle baby formula. This is especially true in countries with less access to clean water and sanitation, increasing the risk of infection in babies. Because formula feeding is costly, many families with babies unable to receive breast milk began purchasing at an ongoing expense. This resulted in some of the more cash-strapped families diluting formula with water, 
so it would last longer. This would ultimately compromise the baby's health. And as a result, thousands of babies died as their mothers swapped Nestle's baby formula for breast milk, leaving the children highly deficient in the required nutrients for breast milk. That earned the formula the baby killer moniker. Things got so out of hand that the World Health Organization had to pass an international code of marketing of breast milk substitutes in 1981. By then, Nestle tried to clear their name and began mentioning in their advertisements. And that's only one of the many frauds of Nestle. Let's talk about their cocoa plantations. Chocolate is one of life's biggest pleasures, but how many people know how much work has to go into creating just a single chocolate bar? In 2005, the International Labor Rights Fund filed a lawsuit against Nestle on behalf of three Malayan children. Eventually, a US court determined that corporations like Nestle couldn't be held liable for violations of international law and dismissed the suit. While Nestle wasn't legally liable for harming these children, it doesn't mean they did nothing wrong. Their role was to carry out checks against them. Most of the unpaid child labor involved in their chocolate production is carried out by the children working on their parents' farms. These farmers cannot afford school and usually need all possible working hands to afford food, shelter, and other needs. Except that since Nestle is the one profiting from them, one would think they'd do something to help. Maybe a donation, building some schools, offering them voluntary assistance. Instead, they tried to improve their image by adding a fair trademark on their labels to show that the chocolate bars are created with ethically sourced cocoa, but that did not solve the main problem, which is the illegal child labor. To this day, Nestle still has farms and plantations with forced child labor. That means that most of the food we purchase from Nestle at our grocery stores has been made using slavery. But to make matters worse, the few products that were created by unpaid hands are deadly to consume. Let's address their food contamination scandal. One would think that being such a big company, Nestle would at least make sure that all of its food was edible, even if it's not healthy or ethically sourced. Except that in July of 2009, the FDA and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention warned consumers to stop eating varieties of the Nestle Toll House refrigerated cookie dough because it could be contaminated with dangerous bacteria. The results were sickness in more than 50 people in 30 states, half of whom required hospitalization. A woman named Linda River even passed away due to one of their fatal infections before the batch was reclaimed. What's more surprising is that this wasn't the first time they caused outright deaths with their products. In 2008, Nestle was under fire for the infamous Chinese milk scandal. Six infants were killed and 860 were hospitalized with kidney problems after some Nestle products were contaminated with melamine. This is a chemical compound sometimes used to artificially increase the protein content of food products. After an investigation took place, the Taiwan Health Ministry discovered that Nestle has added six types of milk powders that contained low-level traces of melamine. They were removed from the shelves, but the damage was already done. Around 300 victims reported consequences from this messed up batch. Two people were executed, life prison sentences were issued, and the event went on to become one of the largest food safety events to ever take place. As always, Nestle denied their part and claimed that all of its products were clean. The Taiwanese government still linked their products to toxic melamine, prompting Nestle to release a statement claiming how they sent 20 specialists from Switzerland to five of its Chinese plants. Supposedly, they'd strengthened chemical testing, but shouldn't they have done that earlier? Food contamination isn't the only type of contamination they've gotten attacked for, as they're also one of the world's largest polluters. Nestle's first major contamination scandal took place in the UK back in 1997, where it was found that water pollution limits were breached 2,152 times in 830 locations by a group of companies including Nestle. Since the US and Europe became highly concerned with how water was handled, they'd moved on to a different market altogether. And Nestle milk powder always screwing things up with a big scandal seems to be a running gag in their companies. This time in 2020, a Nestle milk powder plant in France released all of its biological waste in the local water bodies, killing a whopping three metric tons of fish. That's enough fish to fill a small pool. They kept promising that they'd reduce plastic waste in use, but the company has only increased its share of reusable, recyclable plastic by a measly 1%. So Nestle moved to the Asian market where they committed many environmental crimes. First, Nestle Shanghai's bottled water manufacturing plant began working before its wastewater treatment facilities 
were given the green light to start. That means that they were already contaminating many of their water sources from the get-go. On top of that, there's a report of Nestle capitalizing on China's already polluted waters to make a profit. Nestle extracts water illegally from Brazil for their Perrier brand. As for what their darkest secret could be, we were definitely shocked when we learned that Nestle tried to sue an entire country. In 2002, Nestle demanded the African country of Ethiopia pay them back a supposed debt of $6 million. Apparently because in the 1970s, a military regime in the Ethiopian capital of Adis seized the assets of foreign companies. Hold on a second. Nestle makes $100 billion a year almost as much as the entire country of Ethiopia does. Ethiopia is one of the poorest countries in the world, and it's usually famine stricken, with many children dying from malnutrition on a monthly basis. And in 2002, it was undergoing one of the worst famine seasons of all time. So that's pretty low of Nestle. Not only that, but Nestle lies about their products a lot. They promote all of its cereal brands like Cheerios, Nesquik, and Shredded Whites as some of the healthiest options in the market except that all of these are blatant lies. Most of them have the highest levels of sugar, fat, and salt out there. And what do you think Nestle's response to that is? We're not responsible to promote healthy food. That's what they said. Their nutrition labels are misleading at best and downright false at worst. Apparently, police once had to order Nestle Colombia to decommission 200 tons of imported powdered milk because they were falsely relabeled, first as a local powdered milk brand and with a different production date. See how it's somehow always the powdered milk? Yeah, if you're buying Nestle products for yourself, think twice because they're one of the most hated and evil companies in the world. And if you'd like to learn more about the dark secrets of the food industry, Make sure you subscribe to Brand Bites for more videos like this.